It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with uh, Boxro Eddie Hearn. Um, we've been through a lot of stuff. I think I'm going to do some random stuff today. Uh, that poster there is absolutely incredible. Oh, yeah. Who on earth designed that? What happens to it after the fight? Uh, well, it will be Adam or Maria uh, in our design department. But I actually quite like, I mean, hopefully it will be Sandy Ryan against Terry Harper will be a fight of the year. And we might have to keep that one for the office. Signed by both. That's actually a great piece of art, isn't it? We should do that more often for the bigger fights. Just out of curiosity, like that, the way it's printed, that can't be cheap. No, none of it is. I mean, actually the stuff, all of the stuff, you know, the branding and the setup actually gives you a heart attack when you realise how much it costs. Even that, see the new TV studio over there just for the social media stream. You know, you all of a sudden get a bill for about eight grand for that, you know, but you've got to make sure that it looks the part. It's part of what we've done, really, because everything that everyone used to do, including us, used to look shit. And over the years, people have started copying us. And sometimes they've done it. They've gone ahead of us and we've had to redesign our set and what we're doing. And you've always got to keep evolving, but it is expensive. Yeah, you got you got to keep evolving. Uh, Troy Williamson ish, uh, obviously, is four pounds over. Mm. Just to kind of describe to the fans what happens next. You know, what's the process? What kind of conversations happen? And what kind of fine is he going to be expected to pay? I mean, firstly, is the fight on? And I sit here now at three thirty-four, checking my WhatsApp, where there's been a lot of backwards and forwards about the fight might not be on. So what happens in this situation is, as a team, you have to make a call on a number of different levels. Number one, most importantly, is my fighter going to be at a disadvantage taking this fight because he's overweight? Normally, when someone misses the weight like that, i.e. Maurizio Lara, they've actually not had a great camp or they've found it really difficult to make weight. And very rarely does someone perform at a, a better level when they miss weight like that. But he's going to be heavier. Number two, Financially, what's the situation? I want money off this kid's purse because I'm now fighting him and he hasn't made weight. That's a standard procedure in a situation where someone misses weight. Thirdly, I want you to weigh tomorrow because whatever they are now, what the last thing you want to do is go into the fight and you're 10 pounds lighter than the guy and it's even bigger disadvantage. And number four, do you even want the fight at all? But if you're Ishmael Davis and you don't take the fight, you've trained for 10 weeks, you've lost your date, you ain't going to fight for another 12 weeks after. On what show, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? So it's a very difficult decision to make. What I would be doing, if I was Ishmael uh, Davis's team, Sonny Edwards, I think his manager, or, or, is I would be saying, number one, you have to weigh tomorrow. You've weighed 158 pounds. The fight was made at 154. And you must not be more than 164 tomorrow morning. All right? At 10 a.m. 10 pounds more than the championship weight because that's what Ishmael Davis will be. Number two, how much are you going to pay me? And then I fight. But maybe you got the trainer, you got the manager, you got the friends, you got the fighter, so we'll see. But hopefully they can get it on. Got feeling it happens? From what I'm hearing, 60 40, no. Okay. But we'll see. Uh, Joshua Ngannou, uh, I just want to ask you about the pay-per-view numbers. Have they come out? You know, how did it perform compared to Fury and Ngannou and just your overall expectations of the event? Yeah, I aren't across the pay-per-view numbers of all platforms because obviously it was DAZN with a host broadcaster. It, it, it performed exceptionally well on DAZN and they were very happy. Um, obviously, Ngannou's performance against Tyson Fury made people believe that he could beat Anthony Joshua and it would have really helped the pay-per-view. But I know DAZN were very happy with the numbers and I can only comment on their behalf, even though I don't have the complete report even from them. And was there like a competition between Sky and DAZN, like to kind of like bragging rights, who gets more numbers? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, DAZN were the host broadcaster, so they controlled the show and the feed and um, Sky took the feed. But it would have done great numbers on Sky as well. You know, I don't know who did more, but certainly believe it was DAZN. Um, and yeah, big success. Uh, Ebony Bridges and Shannon Courtney, is there an appetite still for that fight? Because I have saw Ebony's uh, live earlier on this week. It sense the senses that you guys aren't working together anymore. Yeah, I mean, 
Um, we'll have to see. I think I was disappointed with her comments. She, you know, but every fighter is entitled to their opinion in terms of their value. Um, I can only make an offer based on what I've experienced with other fights, but particularly a fighter on viewership, on you know, obviously driving subscription, putting bums on seats, and you know, um, the value of that fight. But every fighter will have a different perception to you of that value. And obviously in this case, it's just, that's just what it is. Ebony Bridges thinks she's worth a lot more money than I'm prepared to pay. And so you either have to find a middle ground or shake hands and, and move on. You know, so I, I was disappointed in the comments because of what we've done. You know, we gave her a, a world title shot um, against Shannon. When she came back, we got a world title shot in Leeds. Um, you know, she boxed on a huge show in America, but she's done a great job as well. She's really put the work in and improved as a fighter. So, you know, I have no problem with um, not agreeing a purse with a fighter. And it's just, it you know, happens often. So, you know, and she's calling out the, the, on the influencer stuff. So, I don't know, you know, she, wherever financially she feels is best suited is where she's going to go. Uh, and yesterday you said, you know, you've you've been told that Adam Azim has pulled out. I just want to know, has that come from Boxer or boxer. has that come from... Yeah. yeah, Ben Shalom message. They, 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 didn't, they didn't say, just to clarify, he's pulled out. They said he's not taking the fight next. So, but he hasn't pulled out. And I said before, you know, I haven't really thought about this, but if Dalton was to lose on Saturday, they might fight him. But if Dalton Smith beats Jose Zapeda in style, there is absolutely no way they'll be going anywhere near him. But... I think they've got a show next week. So I'm sure you guys are going to have lots of questions that might not get answered, but we'll see. Uh, Conor Ben, it's been going on forever and ever and ever. Um, what is going on? You know, the, we were expecting a decision in the Riyadh fight week, but obviously it's two weeks on, there's still no news. No, and we were, you know, originally we were expecting an imminent decision. So, you know, until we do that, we can't announce his next fight. We actually are in a good place for a number of fights now, but we can't tell you where they're going to be. And the deal changes in terms of where those fights are going to be. So it's very frustrating for everybody. Um, he was planning to fight in June. I think realistically it's going to be July, which is over two years since the test. So, but luckily he's had those two fights in America, but you know, we haven't been able to get him the marquee fight that is there for him. And hopefully now we can move forward and do it. Uh, any developments on Jaron Ennis? I know you said over a few months ago you was talking to him, but there's still no confirmation of what he's doing next either. Yeah, he has a purse bid next week for a fight against Cody Crawley. No idea. He's mandatory for the IBF. So um, we haven't really had any more advanced conversations with, with Jaron Ennis. Still love to work with him. Great Would fight. Have you done that? Possibly. Possibly. I don't think that means yes. Uh, no, Terrence, no, no. Terence Crawford, what, uh, what's happening there? Because uh, I assume he's a free agent as well. Any talks going on there? No, I haven't spoken to Terence Crawford. I think you know he's moving up by the sounds of things to 54, and looks like he's going to fight the Tim Zhu, uh, Fandora winner. So Tim Zhu, basically, and that's a good fight. You know, I rate Tim Zhu. I think he's very exciting. Sometimes Australia can pull up the money from the government. Not sure they can pull up what Terence wants, but that's a good fight. Uh, last question, uh, obviously Carl Fudge, his channel's like blowing up and he's got very controversial opinions and just says it as it is. Would we ever see a return of him coming on The Zone again as a pundit or is he too raw and too honest for no, TV? We always use, we've never had a, like an exclusive deal with Carl, but we've always brought him into big shows. We'll always bring him into big shows. He's good value. And I like the fact that Carl's controversial. I think Fudge on fighting is actually really quite amusing. Um, don't agree with everything he says but he's always going to speak his mind. Uh, Eddie, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.